guys are in for a real treat. These two uh, quote unquote smoke boat sailors uh, is the, the slang term for diesel, diesel boat before there was nukes. But I just have to say it was so blessed to, you know, kind of meet up with vets that were the brethren of, um, you know, my service, which was uh, 7882 USS Lafayette. We make molehills out of mountains. Had a lot of firepower on that thing. Went out there and hid. But um, I just want to say that um, submarine service uh, meant everything to my being. I know deep in my heart and soul that I would not be the gentleman I am today without um, being able to close a hatch here, dive, 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 and not come up for 76 days. And uh, spending 76 days underwater with 150 guys making it work. And uh, it was just a blessed, blessed time. And I think these two fine gentlemen do an excellent uh, job uh, relaying that. I met, I met these two, these two fellow submariners. There you go. Good man. There you go. <laughs> they corrected me, and I have to because if they were submariners long before I was a submariner. Right. There you and, go. And, uh, <laughs> and they, but you were in your sir. What's your name? Norm. Norm. When were you in? I was in 5155. 5155. Can you tell me how you didn't go to sub school and got on a sub? That was cool as hell. Oh, is that right? It is. There, I think the need to know, there is a need to know here. Need to know. I put in for submarine school yeah. and they weren't taking anybody. So luckily they sent me to Pearl Harbor sub base. And I was working in the chrome shop and I got to know the first class pretty good. He was a World War II veteran and he knew I wanted to get on the boats. And I kept putting in shits and nothing ever happened. And finally one morning I came in and he said, Norm, on the bulletin board, something you might be interested in. So I went and checked on the bulletin board and there was a notice. Need submarine sailors for the boats. That afternoon I filled it out. He took care of it and said, see you later. And the next day I was on the sea devil. Awesome. Give us like two cents of how important it was in, to your life to be a submariner. It was everything. It was everything. The guy I met on there, I mean, it was unbelievable, you know. Awesome. Cause they kind of took a liking to me, and I took a liking to them, and I really liked being on the boat. So. The only thing I'm sorry about is I didn't stay. Yeah, God bless you. How, how, how happy were you when you when you when you graduated from being a non-qual pupil? Oh man, it's unbelievable. You got your dolphins. It's unbelievable when they. Pin them dolphins on you and then throw you over the side. I mean, that's great. <laughs> I heard they used to do that. They, they didn't do that when I was there. They just they had drinking games when I was in, but that's long gone too. But oh yeah. I want to talk to your friend over here. What's your name, sir? <laughs> My name's Ray. 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 I was on the Sterlet SS three ninety two, fifty three to fifty seven. Wow. And, uh, These what? Got, that's before nuclear submarines. Actually, yeah. Uh, they came up with the Nautilus. Nautilus, Nautilus. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of funny you should mention that because Norm and I were talking earlier uh, about the fact that Nautilus being the first atomic boat that everybody knows about has been a maritime museum for every, every bit of 15 years now. So that tells you how... Old we are. Old you guys. Can you give me a funny sub submariner story? Uh, I got one that you're gonna appreciate. <clears throat> In the forward torpedo room one day, while I was goofing, what came aboard? Oh my God! A five-gallon can of Gilly that was not tainted. <laughs> hey Ward, go back to the galley and get a. Number 10 can of grapefruit juice. <laughs> We're going to have a party. <clears throat> Almost got caught. Went back to the after battery. The cob <laughs> saw me with that can of grapefruit juice heading forward. Said, where the hell you think you're going? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just up forward, cob. To get, give me the grapefruit juice. It's not going to happen today. <laughs> uh, uh, I thought I was going to have to go change my drawers when he was done with me. <laughs> There's a good funny story. When you get on the sub, there's these little things that they goof on you, you know, because make you, you know, make you look dumb and then laugh at you. But there was one called relative bearing grease, and I swear I'd never even heard of this when they tried to pull this on me. 
but relative bearing, anyone that knows anything about navigation, if you don't look it up, relative bearing. But the, the, the joke was that they'd send you back aft for a relative bearing grease. As soon as the chief of the boat did it, I was like trying to stop from smiling because I was going to use this to my full advantage. The cob calls, chief of the boat, head, head enlisted honcho because he was on the watch. He said, Mash, what are you doing back there? I said, Cobb, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for that relative bearing grease, and they don't know much about it back here, but I'm going to find that thing if it uh, means being back here my entire watch. And that's when he said, Mash, get your ass back up here. He was on to my little joke.